the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, former Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya, my colleague Honorable John Bandy from the National Treasury, Honorable Ali Sohome, our Minister for Plans, Public Works, Housing and Urban Development, the Ambassador of Azerbaijan will be uh, our host. This government, this government will host us in COP29. Distinguished guest partners, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I want to begin by expressing my appreciation to my esteemed colleagues for organizing this very, very important meeting and to the Right Honorable Raila Odinga for his presence today. His role as our candidate for the African Union chairperson and his experience as a former special envoy for infrastructure development in Africa are very invaluable and very dear to us. And because I have an opportunity here, uh, let me say it. 16 years ago, myself, the Honorable John Bandy, the current president, served in his government where he was the prime minister. The current president was the minister for agriculture. My friend, me and Honorable Bandy were deputy ministers busy answering questions uh, in those days. So we know our candidate. We know his experience. We know his capabilities. We are presenting a tested, experienced African uh, statesman, a pan-Africanist to the continent. And we are very proud that today you have joined us, Your Excellency. I also want to ex extend my exposition to the African Union Commission, United Cities and Local Governments of Africa, the 14 national focal points of the Building Resilience for Urban Poor, the African Designated Authorities Network, AFDEN, and all our supporting partners. Your collaboration in addressing the climate change challenge affecting our most vulnerable population in both the rural and urban areas is critical, crucial, and important for us today. This meeting is not just timely, it is urgent. And why do I say so? We have witnessed catastrophic floods globally and with severe repercussions in Kenya and other vulnerable regions of Africa. Coming home, the recent floods in Kenya resulted in over 300 deaths, displaced more than 400,000 people, destroyed thousands of homes, and damaged our very critical national infrastructure, including roads and bridges. The destruction of livestock, and farmland further exhibits the crisis we are talking about. And before these floods, Kenya endured one of the worst droughts in its history, displacing over 256,000 people and leaving 4.4 million people facing very severe food insecurity. All these combined impacts of floods and droughts have costed Kenya at least 5% of our GDP. And the effects of the, of, the, of the poorest segments of our population, which are found both in the rural and in the urban, is very devastating. In Nairobi city, for example, 72% of our population were affected by the floods, with 54% of their livelihood and households completely displaced. The urban poor, who make about 60% of our population and reside in informal settlements, and flood-prone areas are shouldering the heaviest burden of climate change. While the government is actively mobilizing resources to recover from these recent floods, it is clear that we need to do much more to address the dire consequences of this climate change. According to the recent UN Habitat report, if current urbanization rates continue, approximately, which is 50% of Kenyans now will live in urban areas by 2030. Another UN report predicts that by 2050, 60% of Africa's population will reside in cities and towns. With the high rate of migration from rural to urban areas, our largest cities ultimately will be, will be increasing and increasingly be located in developing countries. 
This will exhibit the spread of informal settlements and intensify the threats posed by climate change. And it's imperative that we first with this, we tackle climate change with the urgency it requires and we must have, a we must have, uh, we must resolve. At the continental level, adaptation remains our top priority. And as the current chair of the Committee of African Heads of State on Climate, that is Kenya, our president, President Ruto, and the chair of the African group of negotiators led by our special envoy on climate change, Ambassador Ali Mohammed, we are committed to making adaptation a key important focus in all our multilateral processes as a country. To confront climate change challenges, Kenya hosted the first ever Africa Climate Summit and adopted the Nairobi Declaration, which will guide our continent climate action. Notably, Kenya has enacted several legal and policy measures to address climate change. We have one of the most robust climate act. My ministry is currently spearheading the 15 billion tree growing strategy to safeguard our catchment areas and enhance resilience. Alongside other pivotal initiatives that promote climate action through carbon markets. In the last eight months, we have planted over 400 million trees and we keep on planting them. We are also integrating climate change considerations across all sectors of our economy in alignment with the bottom-up economic transformation agenda known as BETTER of our fifth administration. I am proud of the two Kenyan-led initiatives that will be discussed here today, the, 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 the BIC, BICRAP and the FLOCA. These programs aim to develop and implement infrastructure and social programs in order to build resilience among our most vulnerable populations, including children, the elderly women, and the people with a disability, as committed in the Nairobi Declaration. Both programs are part of the National Climate Action Plan, FLOCA, and in particular has successfully mobilized financing at both the community level through our county governments. This pioneering program success must be expanded across the continent and to our urban centers. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the launch of BACAP by the UN Secretary General in 2019 and its implementation plan by President William Ruto at the African Climate Summit marks a significant step forward in our deliberation. Now five years on, we must advance its implementation. And I want to commend Honorable Ali Sohome and the Executive Secretary of the United Cities and Local Governments of Africa for their leadership in mobilizing resources for backup in the 14 African countries. The successful implementation of this program requires a united effort. Governments, NGOs, civil society, the private sector, international agencies must come together to provide the necessary funding, expertise, and resources to elevate it to the level of FLOCA. And I'm very hopeful that Backrub Kenya will address critical challenges such as housing, water, infrastructure, including even accelerating our affordable housing and slum upgrading program and supporting the Nairobi River Commission in its cleanup efforts. Your Excellency, former Prime Minister, I want to assure you that I will take the route of the late John Michuki. I will clean Nairobi River Commission. <laughs> I will take the route of Wangari Madai in saving Karura Forest today that you will enjoy. So the 141 industry players and many people who we have done through traceability and who are polluting the rivers, Nairobi rivers, you better think twice. There's a new sheriff in town. I will deal with it. We must see, we must see the blue waters of these rivers all the way from Kikuyu to the end of the eastern part of Nairobi. 
Nairobi, Your Excellency, former Prime Minister, is the environmental capital of the world. That's why we have UNEP here. And because you, sp you spearheaded our constitutional making of 2010, Kenyan constitution is a green constitution. From the preamble, the fourth of the preamble, to many articles, they talk about how environment is our heritage, we must preserve it, we must protect it for now and for the future generation. So I'm going to implement the green constitution of 2010. I'm going to implement what our forefathers, key leaders like Wangari Madai did for our country. As I conclude, I urge the 14 Bakrap County representatives and Afdan as the Green Climate Fund, the focal point, to finalize the modalities for implementing the GCF readiness, support to scale up Flocker and mobilize resources for Bakrap and other resilience building projects. I trust this meeting will produce a clear investment pipelines, both for initiatives which are suitable for presentation under the African Climate Summit Nairobi Declaration Framework. I urge Afdan to identify and address the barriers to investment in adaptation and the slow rate of disbursement and access, particularly from GCF and other global funds. Present these outcomes for consideration at the AMKEN, a meeting of the environment ministers that will be held in Abidjan next week and in all other continental forums that all of us together, our ministers, our technical people, our PSS will be attending. So I call on Afdan to support similar national and the continental initiative to ensure no one is left behind. I wish you all productive discussion. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Cabinet Secretary. As you observed, adaptation is priority for the continent. And as you noted, Kenya spends 5% of our GDP. In fact, uh, UNECA, UN Economic Commission for Africa figures indicate Africa spends 5 to 9% of our GDP to address uh, adaptation issues, relocating our budget from development to responding to uh, impacts of climate change. Allow me now to invite uh, His Excellency the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury and Economic Planning. As we all know, and as I said earlier, climate finance will be a pivotal issue, a central issue in COP29. His Excellency President William Ruto is the leader of international financial reform agenda, and debt issue is a big discussion at COP29 and the UN General Assembly, and nobody is better to lead us in that discussion than our minister, our cabinet secretary for national treasury. You have the floor, Your Excellency. And may I also invite, ask you to invite His Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Ali. Um, good morning. I have a problem with my voice, but uh, I hope today to